name is Julie and I'm an astronomer. I'm here to tell you about an amazing event coming up on April 8. It's the kind of things you only get to see once in your lifetime. A total solar eclipse. The first one to happen over eastern Canada in over 50 years. But what is a solar eclipse anyway? Well, we live here on the Earth. And the Earth goes around the sun in one year. Next to us, we have the moon, and the moon goes around the Earth once a month, roughly. A solar eclipse happens when the alignment is just right, when we have the sun, the moon, and the Earth perfectly aligned so that the shadow of the moon will fall on the Earth. And if we happen to live here, we get to see a solar eclipse because we are in the shadow of the moon, and from our perspective, we will see the moon block out the sun in the sky. Now, my drawing here is not to scale at all. In reality, all objects and distances should be much bigger. So having the perfect alignment is quite rare. And what is even more rare is finding ourselves there in the shadow of the moon. And that's why we're lucky, because for the next eclipse, we happen to live here. This is really our eclipse. Thanks to mathematics and our scientific knowledge, we know exactly when and where the eclipse will happen. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. We can predict precisely this cosmic alignment of the sun, the moon, and us. Since everything moves, the shadow of the moon will move across the surface of the Earth. During the eclipse next April, it will cross Mexico, the United States, and it will finish its course across eastern Canada. If we look at it on a map, you can see the regions of partial eclipse and the region of total eclipse. If you happen to live in the region of total eclipse, you will see the moon cover the sun completely. That's awesome, since that's where the show will be at its best. If you live in the regions of partial eclipse, you will see the moon cover quite a bit of the sun, but it will never hide it completely. To observe a solar eclipse, you want to protect your eyes because you want to look at the sun directly, and you know you're not supposed to do that. The best way to do it is to use eclipse glasses. These are simple cardboard glasses with solar filters. They don't let a lot of light through, so the only thing you see with them is the sun. They're quite different from regular sunglasses you wear on sunny days. With these on, you can't see anything around you. So to observe the eclipse, you simply put them on and you look up. Now, if you don't have eclipse glasses, there are different ways to observe the sun indirectly using what we call the projection method. But the important thing to remember is never to look at the sun directly without your eclipse glasses. To understand what you'll see during the eclipse, I will use a simulator on the screen here. So what we see is the view from Sherbrooke, which is a city in the region of total eclipse. And we see the sun in the sky. Uh, we don't see it, but the moon is right here, ready to pass in front of the sun. So I will move the time forward, and then you will see that the part of the sun appears to be missing. This is actually the beginning of the partial eclipse when the moon starts covering the sun. So the moon is right here. As the eclipse progresses, you'll see more and more of the sun covered, but this is what we call the partial eclipse. As long as there is a part of the sun visible, you need to have your glasses on. So partial eclipse, glasses on. In Sherbrooke, when we reach the eclipse maximum, it will be the total eclipse, or what we call totality. And this is the amazing show. What you see here is the moon completely covering the surface of the sun. And what you see all around is what we call the solar corona. It's the outer layer of the sun's atmosphere, and it's not very bright, so usually we don't see it. But during totality, we get to see it, and actually now you have to remove your glasses to be able to see it. If you keep them on, you will miss the show. So only during totality, you can remove your glasses, you will see this in the sky, and make sure to have a look all around you because it, you'll notice that it's quite dark. It's very different. It's beautiful. You'll see a glow on the horizon. This is the best show. But it only lasts a few minutes. It's not very long. As soon as it's over, as soon as the sun reappears from behind the moon, you need to put your glasses back on. So as soon as we have a tiny crescent sun, you put these back on. Again, partial eclipse, you wear the glasses. 
and then the partial eclipse will progress until the moon is completely off the sun and we're back to just a sunny day. Now I want to show you the view from a city not in the region of total eclipse. So this is for Quebec City and at eclipse maximum you will see a thin crescent sun like this. So this is the sun almost completely covered by the moon but there's still enough sun that it's dangerous for your eyes and you need to keep your glasses on when you see this. It looks very thin but in reality it is quite bright. So if you are in the region of partial eclipse you will need to keep your glasses on at all times to observe the eclipse. A few years ago I had the chance to travel to see a total solar eclipse and it's something I'll remember all my life. It's really beautiful to look at and I hope we all get clear skies on April 8 so we can enjoy the show. If it's cloudy well the show won't be the same although it will still get dark during the daytime. So on April 8, we'll all meet outside looking up at the sky with our eclipse glasses, obviously. There will be millions of us observing the eclipse at the same time and I think it's really nice because it brings us all together. We'll all be united in the shadow of the moon in this fantastic cosmic alignment. Happy eclipse everyone!